I think the problem is this inconsistency, just because uh, we see it quite a lot of activism, I, I might say, but it's it's sporadic. It's it, it it's usually linked to some event or some or some or uh, some issue that is uh, somehow discussed in the parliament. Uh, I think we should see more consistent social activism. Sveiki visi Start FM radio klausytojai. Su jumis Universiteto LGBT plus grupės laida aš neprieš bet. Labai džiaugiuosi, pagaliau galėdama sveikinti su jumis iš Start FM studijos, tačiau šiandienos laida mus nukels į vieną iš Vilnus universiteto kemelių, kuriame birželio 16 dieną vyko diskusija apie tai, kaip aktyvizmas keičia universiteto. Ko gero jau ir laidos pavadinimas sufleruoja tai, kad diskusija vyko anglų kalba, nes turėjome garbės pakalbinti Jungtinių Amerikos valstijų ambasadorių Lietuvoje Robert Kilchrist. Taip pat kalbėjomis su Vilniaus universiteto prorektoriumi Artūru Vasiliausku bei Vilniaus universiteto rektoriaus patarėjų Pauliu Gritėnu. Po kalbio metu aptarėme ne tik tai, ar aktyvizmas gali sugriauti senasias universiteto tradicijas, bet ir tai, ką apskritai kiekvienam iš pašnekovų reiškia aktyvizmas, bei kokie jų nuomonė ryškiausia aktyvizmo įvykiai labiausiai pakeitė pasaulio ar Vilniaus universiteto vaizdo. Kadangi pokalbis yra šitas gyvai, klausytojus turiu perspėti, kad bus nemažai pašalinių garsų ir nedidelių techninių nesklandumų, tačiau visą tai manau tik suteiks laidai gyvumo ir artumo, o karantino laikotarpį mes ko gero jau pripratome prie galbūt netokios idealios garso kokybės. Tad linkiu gero klausimo, manau ši diskusija tikrai labai gražiai apibendrina ir vainikuoja mūsų sezono pabaigą, tad linkiu geros vasaros ir susimatysime rugsėjo mėnesį mūsų naujajame sezone. Ok, so I think we can start uh, start our discussion, our conversation. Um, and thank you for everyone who's listening on our radio show, because it's being recorded right now. So yeah, and uh, without further ado, I think we're going to start this conversation about activism. And um, I'm sure you all know our, uh, our lovely guests, but I still have the honor of introducing them. So first of all, we have the United States Ambassador to Lithuania, Mr. Robert Gilchrist. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's great uh, to be here. <laughs> thank you. Uh, we also have Vilnius University uh, Partnerships Pro-Rector, Arunas Vasilauskas. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Arturas. <laughs> Artur, sorry. <laughs> Fine. Arturas. It's always like that. <laughs> um, and um, Vilnius University uh, Rector's uh, advisor and philosopher, Paulus Gritenas. <laughs> Thank you for adding philosopher. <laughs> <laughs> always. <laughs> always. <And> Exaggerating. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so come on. Yeah, so come as on. I said, we're, today we're going to talk about uh, activism. And I would oh, start, uh, like to start uh, with a quote from Alice Walker. Uh, and she said that, Activism uh, is the rent I pay for living on this planet. Mm. So first of all, I would like to ask you, for each of us, or for each of you, what it does it mean, like to be active? What does activism mean for you? So, Ambassador, um, you can start. <laughs> activism for me, um, my goodness, I think it's a part of me and what I do every day. Um, I think activism in a democracy means our ability to ha- ability to have an impact. Um, to, to work for equality, um, to work for elements of social justice that society still needs to focus on. And I think as a citizen in democracy, um, it's important to speak up. It's important to, to um, help things move um, forward in the direction that we seek it to move forward in. Um, I consider myself an activist. Um, I have worked a lot on LGBT rights, but also in, in other areas as well, and it's a component of, of how I how I am as a diplomat too. So um, it's something that's incredibly powerful and really is a driving force uh, for me and I think for many others. Well, it's difficult to add to Ambassador's <laughs> words, but I would say that activism for me means responsibility, that I take up responsibility for things and I believe that I can change things 
as a human being, we think we are fragile and small, you know, we have no influence, but that's not true. If you move things, they start to move. So, so I think it's about responsibility and believing that you can change things. And uh, many people don't believe that. And many people don't know that they have this power inside them, you know. And one of the most important, important uh, aspects of activism is that you connect with other people and you work together uh, and, and do things together. You achieve impact together. So uh, I have, you know, maybe we will have opportunity to, to talk about personal stories. Uh, I will share maybe also my, my story as well. But it's important that you act in a group always, you know. We are social be beings in general, yes? So, so it's important, uh, you know, that, that they act as a community as well, yeah. Thank you. Paula, what about you? I think I cannot talk without personal experience, so I'll jump on this theme if you will let me. Uh, just because, as I mentioned before the discussion, uh, as I was studying philosophy in Vilnius University, uh, philosophers are usually, at least in Europe, uh, seen as introverts or, or persons who do not like other person or social activities or activism per se. Uh, but uh, after the studies, when I started to grow old, when I understood my position in society, uh, I, 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 I experience myself as a some kind of privileged person because I'm a white male, uh, white heterosexual male uh, who, who, who lives quite um, wealthy, quite, quite uh, full of rights life. Uh, and I saw in my uh, inner circles and in, my, in, in circles of my friends, people who cannot express themselves as freely as I can as a person of, of privilege in, 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 in this age. So uh, I think that led me to underst understanding that some kind of activism and saying what I think is truth and what I think, think is right uh, must be done at some point. So I, 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 I might call myself an individual activist, uh, meaning that my, activi my activism is pretty much uh, writing uh, on social networks or writing essays or writing in general or speaking up some questions openly, uh, but but I think that activism in general is a, is a great process, and I think it it makes the society really the, the civic society that we we're all uh, starting trying to develop towards. So so yeah, lo 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 lots of good words to activism. <laughs> uh, and we had a quick chat with um, uh, Polish before this discussion and he said that uh, he was not very active in his uh, younger days but I'm sure he still participated in some kind of uh, you know activist groups or like some kind of uh, organizations so I would like to ask uh, for you to share some uh, some experiences some memorable experiences from your university days what I uh, what I can say is also when I was in university I, um, I wasn't an activist. I certainly wasn't the activist that I, that I later became. But I benefited tremendously from activism. In the United States um, in the 1980s, um, a lot of then fairly small LGBT groups were focusing on, on coming out, National Coming Out Day, um, to increase visibility of LGBT people. Um, it was also a time when the HIV AIDS um, crisis, pandemic, um, was aff infecting tens of thousands, if not really hundreds of thousands of American gay men. Um, and early in this pandemic, the uh, political leadership was fairly tone deaf and wasn't actually taking action. And there were a number of really important civil society movements that developed that said, you have to focus on this, you have to do something. The government needs to provide funding. We need to increase education and we need to recognize the loss of these people, of these gay people. And so early on when I was still wrestling with, with my own identity, I, I remember um, seeing um, the AIDS quilt in the United States, which was uh, a project to create one panel of a quilt for every, um, every person, mostly gay men, who who died from HIV AIDS at the time. And the numbers were so large that the quilt could just, they covered huge parts of the National Mall in Washington. And I saw it, and this was when I was wrestling with my own identity, and I, and I, I think I, I recognized um, the need um, for me not just to sort of get through whatever personal crisis I had, but also more broadly um, to do what I could, could do to make a difference for these people um, and for for civil rights more broadly. And so I was impacted by what others are doing. 
and their leadership, quite honestly, made all the difference in the world to me. Well, it's a boasting time for me now. <laughs> well, I, I was sort of an activist, I think, in my young days, even pre in pre-university age, so to say. Uh, in 1987, it was, we established the first non-communist organization. Uh, it was a youth club for protecting historical monuments. And of course, it was just a cover, you know, to, to all sorts of other, you know, uh, semi-illegal discussions and activities. We were going to hill forts, you know, to fix them or doing something in the old house, you know, sort of fixing it or not, you know. And, uh, well, uh, that actually was the first time when I also entered university because the, 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 um, the, the main group of these people who established were students uh, and uh, students from ma mainly from historic uh, history department. So at, I remember so, uh, that I was visiting Vilnius University History Department j even before I started to study it, you know. Or, and so it was a very memorable time. And of course, in, in my time, it was very easy to be an uh, activist. It was a wonderful time of, my, you know, the uh, peaceful, uh, peaceful revolution, peaceful reawakening, uh, national democratization in Lithuania. And uh, uh, I always say, you know, when somebody asks me to, can you, Arturas, tell in a few words what it was like that? For me, it was the time then we thought that politics is an art of telling the truth. You tell the truth and the reality changes, you know. When we achieved independence, you know, uh, all the normal, you know, process of democracy started on interest groups, you know, fighting for their interests. That's normal. That's a normal, you know, operation of democracy. We understood that. Politics is not only about telling the truth, but it was still a wonderful time, you know, when 300,000 people gathered together in a, you know, in a Vingis Park, you know, and, and sing and celebrate, you know, the upcoming freedom, you know. We all knew we will be independent, absolutely, you know. So it was a very easy time, you know, to be an activist, you know. So that's a short sort of a memory. Yeah. Okay, and you mentioned Vingis Park, and you know, recently we had like a huge uh, march uh, um, of traditional families, yeah. you know. So, could you say that there is bad kind of good and good kind of activism, or we should consider them all equal? I, I, if it's to me, uh, I can reply. For all of you, yeah. <laughs> who wants I think to you know, in a democratic society, people have a, uh, a right to express their views. Nobody denies that, and. Uh, but then people voice opinions which say that let's limit, you know, other people's freedoms, you know, let's reject their identity, let's tell that they are wrong, you know. I mean, the basic, you know, the basic uh, uh, assumption of a pluralist society that we live and we may disagree, but we live together. We may not even like each other, but we agree that we don't deny each other's identity, you know. If these basic things are denied by activism, I am against such activism. Yeah. Ambassador, do you have anything to add? Um, no, I mean, and certainly in, in a democracy, um, the fundamental right to free speech is central in what we do. And ultimately, it's, it's that free speech and that free assembly that over time um, have produced change in fundamental ways. Um, I think. Well, what I often hark back to um, is a, a famous quote by Martin Luther King, um, that the arc of history is long, but it always bends towards justice. And I think perhaps in the case of, of the, the, the so-called traditional family coalition that, that, um, that protested in Vingus Park, um, I don't know if that necessarily is the arc leaning towards justice. I think that there are activists on the other side who are explaining who LGBT people are. Um, and who, who aren't opposed to the traditional family, um, but wa rather want the traditional family to be something that's accessible for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people as well. Um, I think it's important to, um, to approach activism with compassion and with understanding of those who have different views. And I think it's imp important to approach it um, from a perspective of trying to, to have an impact and affect change in a positive way. So that's my perspective, yeah. <laughs> okay, and I think the traditional, uh, you know, um, family <laughs> who, you know, trying to protect the, them, um, they're really, you know, are afraid that, you know, it's gonna change the face maybe of Lithuania and stuff like that. So do you believe, uh, for example, Polis, as a philosopher, do you believe that uh, um, 
uh, activism can can really ruin traditions um, and you know ruin something. Uh, from philosophical point, I'm tempted to uh, define the idea of uh, activism or activity uh, as a sympathizer to a lo logical uh, empirism or analytical philosophy. Uh, in that sense, activism is a move or, or, or willful move towards changing some situation or changing the order of the world as, as we see it. So uh, in that sense, activism really changes the situation, changes the uh, balances of power, changes the uh, situation of uh, every individual or, or groups in, in a society. Uh, but uh, comparing that to ruining tradition, uh, I, I guess no. Uh, and, 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 from, and from what point do we look to the tradition, I may ask, just because uh, when those people say tradition, uh, they, are, they are pretty much defining tradition by uh, acting like the world around us doesn't change, like the people that uh, haven't got a word to speak uh, now are not speaking, and so on and so on. So I, I do not see tradition as a... Uh, as somehow trying to secure the world or trying to secure the state that we were living in in, 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 in some in some uh, in some time uh, I see tradition as a some kind of progress uh, that we base on the values that we see are comparable towards human rights towards uh, humanity in, in general so in that in, in that sense uh, no social activism or no movement that uh, defines itself in the boundaries of human rights and, and, and boundaries uh, towards uh, respect to other people or, or, or more equality are not against tradition. Tradition, uh, by definition, is something good that we continue. So I think we, uh, in, in that sense, we could say that social activism creates the tradition that we must follow uh, in the future and, and we must somehow uh, put the boundaries on and on uh, 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 every other next day. So uh, no, to cut it short, it's not ruining tradition. I think it's creating tradition and it's also uh, enriching tradition in it's, it's, it's some sense, uh, giving us the perspective of, of, of nowadays uh, in, in the sense that we are looking from the pa past uh, position. Okay. Arturas, maybe do you have something to add from the university's point of view? Because Vilnius University has a long uh, history, long traditions, and maybe, you know, maybe it can really, you know, activism, such yes, ac uh, activist groups as ours, maybe it can, you know. Yeah. Thank you for an easy question. <laughs> <laughs> as a historian, I can tell that, you know, Vilnius University students were, are, are active from the very beginning. But if you look at the 17th century, 18th century, this was a Jesuit academy students, you know, and they sort of didn't like other opinions too much, especially their compatriots from other religious confessions. So they're causing a lot of trouble here in the city, uh, you know, running in their marches, you know. So <laughs> still, some, some sort of activism, yeah? Mm -hmm. But if we talk about the, uh, the true tradition of activism, uh, uh, I would, uh, of course, recall Philomats and Philarets, you know, the, the beginning of 19th century, then Lithuania and Poland were under, under occupation by, by Russia, then Vilnius University was still operating, but it was not a, a you know, state of complete freedom. So, you know, they established little, little secret societies of not destroying or challenging the traditions, but actually to, fostering the f to foster them and develop them, to self-educate and to help com you know, people of this land you know, to somehow achieve better level of education, better level of cultural awareness, and finally uh, maybe a step towards political independence. It was a very consistent work, uh, very coherent work, and especially if we talk about these young people, they're very young people, you know. And of course, Thomas Zanas, Adam Mickiewicz, Adamas Mickiewicz, you know, these kind of people, you know, are, are, uh, we're creating the tradition of, of you know, the tradition of, uh, of creatively developing tradition, not destroying it, destroying it, you know. And in general, you know, Paulus already said that uh, societies never s stand still. That's not possible, simply, you know. There are some people who think that it's possible to stop the society and to freeze it in a certain point of development. It's not possible, you know. And activism is about, you know, uh, sort of controlling the change, making uh, uh, the change 
uh, uh, more you know more more accessible to human control yeah so that's uh, that's that's the definition of of activism and its uh, relation towards uh, tradition and it pretty much does not change historically uh, the the perspective on of individual freedom was also important for philomats philorets and it's also important nowadays talking about LGBT rights, for example. I mean, if I can add that um, same-sex partnership or marriage in the United States hasn't negatively impacted traditional, the traditional family in any way whatsoever. So I think there's not any empirical evidence um, that would indicate that, that there's a threat to the traditional family. Rather, as I said, LGBT people want the same access and rights that other people have. And I think it's also important more broadly um, for, for LGBT, especially young people who may, are often afraid, um, who don't feel support um, from their family or within society, um, to see institutions more broadly um, being accepting. Um, I think that that will have a, a huge impact on certainly the mental health of a large percentage of the population and even, even an impact more broadly on things like teen suicide or young people who are kicked out of their homes or a lot of other challenges. So there are broader implications. I, I, I think um, I think sort of expanding expanding rights in this manner, in many ways, will actually strengthen the traditional family rather than weaken it in any way. I saw it. Yeah, yeah. Just one dead. one very nice example. I just recalled it. You know, it, uh, uh, we have a very uh, good historian, Norbertus Chernauskas. He just published a book about the uh, 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 summer of 1940. That's the time when Lithuania was occupied. But the he last summer of Lithuania. The last summer of Lithuania. He describes the situation just before the occupation. He gives a sort of a cross cross section of society, you know. And there was then a debate uh, that you know about introducing civil marriage. And the argument was, was the same: it will destroy traditional family. <laughs> you know, we come back after so many years. You know, again, the the partnership will destroy traditional family. You know, we know for sure, but civil civil marriage did not destroy traditional no. family. <laughs> so it's just uh, an example. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And as uh, Ambassador mentioned, you know, in the United States. Um, it is already illegal to get married for LGBT uh, countries, so maybe we are, you know, there is no need for for us to compare Lithuania and um, USA because we are in different points of history. But do you notice any difference uh, from American activism and Lithuanian activism? Um, I think sort of looking at the point. I guess if we're talking about this specific group of issues. Um, I would say no, if from the fundamental perspective of having individuals who recognize that something's wrong, and, and in, this, in this context I mean um, uh, people who, who support expanding rights for LGBT people, um, standing up, speaking out, and continuing to move forward, facing defeat from time to time and just marching forward because at a really fundamental level they know um, that the arc of justice is leaning towards, or the arc of history is leaning towards justice. And um, so in, in, a, in a very basic way I see so many similarities. Um, activism, especially activism from the heart, um, really it trans transcends societies and in many cases it actually transcends issues as well. Paulus, maybe you notice some kind of difference, not necessarily in LGBT uh, field, but uh, in general. Yeah, I, th I think uh, the difference is in principle or in the speed uh, in that uh, activism translates into political will. Uh, I think at least the image is that in the United States uh, the, the activism uh, usually is somehow reflected in political decisions, uh, or at least there are political re representa representation in the Congress or somewhere else where, where, where the, those questions are put openly. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's the other way in Lithuania just because look at our situation where uh, few important people and, and, and you are sitting here in Vilnius University and we must somehow, uh, I know, not secretly but, but uh, n not very openly uh, uh, say for you that you are equal people to other people in the society. So I think that that is the main difference, just because uh, in Lithuania, political elite is not so is not so um, fast to to rec uh, recognize changes. It's not so fast to recognize the equality of the people, and I think this transition 
took too long and everyone understands that and, and, and even the situation that we are facing now, with, uh, as I said, you somehow must, uh, must feel, uh, uh, I know, un uncomfortable for the people, uh, especially talking about the uh, law of partnership, which was not uh, voted, in, 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 uh, voted in in parliament. Uh, yeah, so these situations, uh, I, f I think the translation against social activism and political will and uh, respect for, for, for the people are not so, still not so common in Lithuania despite the 30 years that we have and the civil society and the level of civil society that we somehow um, managed to, 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 to get to, but, but still the problem is, is on and I think that e e even the mere uh, seeing that the problem exists and not doing anything or or stalling the process are are, are uh, shameful from our countryside. Mm -hmm. But um, is there a possibility that, for example, a young um, activism organization could change some something in government, for example? I would say heck yes. <laughs> um, I mean, I think, th but there are, there, are no, there are a number of different levels, I think, that activists, and it's not just for LGBT, this is activism in general, that you have to operate. There's the political level, and obviously impacting policy and impacting the language that comes from leadership and the steps that are taken. And there's also sort of changing the hearts and minds of a population more broadly. And um, in, in multiple US movements, not just LGBT, even the environmental movement, or I think about um, the feminist movement beginning well before women had the right to vote in the United States. It, it, it operated on, on multiple levels. At the political level, it operated in a way you know, to, to educate um, people more broadly, expose them. In the case of LGBT, it's, it took coming out for a lot of people so that people knew their neighbor was gay, their son or daughter was LGBT. Um, it took that and then it also took operating at the political level. So it's multi-pronged, but I mean, I, I've been amazed time and time again at the power that individuals have in affecting change. Mm. And I, you know, reaching the age I've now reached, I can look back at um, so many movements in the United States that at certain points appeared almost hopeless, but people kept fighting because they knew it was right. And they worked together, um, not just protesting in the street, but then in, 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 in changing things in, in many different ways. And, and they had an impact. They had a real impact. And in many ways, I think democracy happens that way much more than it happens in the halls of the Samus or of the US Congress. Well, can I be a bit more sharp-edged? <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, I think even the level of social activism is living it's too 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 low in my in, in my opinion you know uh, uh, we need of that more in the university as well you are very daring people LGBT plus uh, community you know uh, even coming out is an act of you know boldness yeah but then you see the whole landscape you know uh, lots of issues lots of issues social issues uh, you know uh, uh, and they are not being addressed by any uh, kind of social activism. But there was one issue: they they banned the al uh, the uh, the advertisement of alcohol, and lots of people <laughs> on the street, you know, <laughs> demonstrating, marching, you know. I, I, I mean, uh, maybe we need people sobered up for yeah, discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe we need you know <laughs> to cover um, l uh, larger areas of uh, social issues, not just uh, ban of alcoholic beverages in advertisement, you know. Yeah. I think I think the problem is inconsistency, just because uh, we see uh, quite a lot of activism, I, I might say, but it's it's sporadic. It's it, it it's uh, usually linked to some event or some or some or uh, some issue that is uh, somehow discussed in the parliament. Uh, I think we should see more consistent social activism, and and it should it should uh, it should be all four or all five years uh, of the cadency in parliament. Uh, we must uh, also ask ask questions openly and uh, repeat and repeat and repeat, which pretty much I am doing from 2010. I'm writing about this theme and and saying that we must somehow. Uh, I, I remember when Estonia uh, uh, accepted accepted the law of, of, of partnership. I remember uh, how pretty much a majority of European countries uh, became open to idea of partnership uh, of, 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 of the same sex uh, and same sex marriage also. 
And we are still saying the same things on the thing, uh, repeating the arguments, but I think it's the some kind of uh, uh, Sisyphus work we would we, we must do and we must do it consistently just just to be represent, uh, representative of, of this question and just to show that people uh, in elite or people in the middle class or people in the lower classes are all uh, somehow uh, binded by this by, by this problem and, and they want it to, to be somehow solved mm -hmm. so consistency yeah. yeah and persistence maybe and you know, persistence just, yeah. also Okay, so, but uh, a lot of people might get, you know, tired. I see a lot of comments and, you know, discusses about, oh, how much can they talk about the same topic, you know, people get tired. So I think it's, you know, solving that problem also is an, an, an issue. I think you keep talking until yeah. you just wear them down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And Hire <laughs> them out. And then that's when yeah. you get what you're, what in you're general, looking for. Yeah. 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 Sorry, Ambassador. No, please, please. In general, it is, uh, uh, you know, one shall understand that achieving social change is a long, long, long time. Uh, uh, achieving a consensus, even partial consensus in society, it takes so much time. Uh, you know, you have at the very beginning, you have very hostile positions, you know. How do you reconcile that at, at least bit by bit, you know, that's a big art, you know. So if you want to be a social activist, you need to understand that it'll, <laughs> it will not achieve uh, your goals quickly, you know, it may take decades, you know, uh, you know, abolition of, uh, uh, you know, r racial dis segregation and all these things, they're happening over centuries, you know, and uh, of course we want to move faster, you know, that's very natural, but it will not happen uh, without consistency and perseverance, you know, I like this perseverance word because it's on Mars now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and and if I can add bravery, yeah. Yeah. and also bravery. And um, I think many of the people I admire the most are the ones who stood up um, during challenging times. Um, Martin Luther King ha also, I, I think of him a lot and I, I quote him a lot, but he has a quote that I might botch, but I'll try not mm. to, is that a man is not judged by where he stands um, during comfort and convenience, um, but where he stands during times of, of challenge and controversy. Mm. And it, it requires a lot of bravery and sometimes feeling like you're alone and a lot of vulnerability, particularly in a place like Lithuania where everybody knows each other, or many people know each other. And so I applaud those who are standing up right now um, and, and saying things that, are, that are, are sometimes difficult for others to hear, but saying things that need to be said. And I would add up to bravery. I think it's linked to bravery. It's uh, uh, open talking and personal experience. I think, for example, uh, for me, the, I don't know, I could not say breaking point. I was always aware of the of the problems, but but the breaking point personally and emotionally was first official LGBT Baltic Pride parade in in, in Lithuania, uh, when I s w w where I saw how people are happy just expressing themselves, just being themselves, and on the other side were people which were, which were angered by their uh, not knowing what's happening, not knowing, not 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 accepting the change, not accepting that happiness and thinking behind that happiness must be something evil, must be something, uh, I don't know, conspiracy theory, it must be someone who's paying the money for them to be happy and so on. So I, I think that that was emotionally for me breaking point, the, the closeness I felt for those people who wanted to just, to just to express themselves openly in society, just to be accepted of who they are. Uh, and I think that, that experience, uh, as I felt, uh, could be shared with people who are at least neutral or at least are willing to listen and I think there are majority people willing to listen uh, and we must reach them and talk to them as possible. Mm -hmm. And we're talking now about activism in more like broad terms but I think it's about time we get to the universities level because our topic is how, uh, how activism changes universities and we talked about you know that um, it won't ruin the traditions, change is good but how do you think uh, universities would look like with no activism? I think they'd be pretty boring places. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, it's universities are environments in which, um, for many people, they're they're they're, they're operating outside of home. They're um, for younger students. They're they're really identifying um, their their own perspectives, uh, politically speaking. And I think um, universities are also a focal point for activism because um, because this young people, students. Um, are looking at a whole life ahead of them and their ability to really have an impact on issues that will be fundamental to how they lead their lives. 
um, it, it really starts now. It starts now. And so um, I, 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 I think, as I said, that it would be dull at university without activism. And, um, and I greatly value the voices that come from, from students and, and from others in a university environment as we move forward on a number of social, a number of social areas. So, mm -hmm. yeah. As a pro-rector, what, what do you think? Well, I think uh, universities should be and are, in many cases, the hotbed you know, of, of uh, uh, social activism. Why? simply because it's a place where you know people are concerned about wide wider range of issues than just for example bottom line yes or economic efficiency here happens uh, exchange of knowledge accumulation of knowledge uh, uh, learning or, or you know uh, um, production of knowledge all these things are related to creativity and freedom yeah university is not a university if it's not autonomous you know we were discussing recently for example, shall we include into a certain consortium of universities, uh, you know, universities from authoritarian countries? But then, is it a university when the rector is appointed or removed by <laughs> by the president? You know, it's not. You know, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, as a place of natural freedom, you know, or, or, or it must be a place that activism is happening. You know, and if it's not happening, we need to check if it's a real university. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I also just could add to what Prorector said. Uh, the principle of university is based on openness and open discussions and debating and changing or, or thinking of the reality. Uh, I could point out to, I don't know, even the idea of academia from Plato's years or, or Lycaon for Aristotle's years at all, uh, the, uh, the Middle Age era or all the eras we, 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 we could point out, all, all, the, all those years where uh, universities were the pretty much the the core of intele intellectual life, core of uh, young people trying to uh, think of the reality that are surrounding them and trying to change it and trying to somehow, I don't know, from the uh, <laughs> from the uh, talking about uh, f philosophical questions to the uh, ex experience ex experiencing the life in the same circles or the same mind or. Or, or broader mind circles uh, that u university life gives. To, so, yeah, in that sense, university is just, a, a, as the director said, a hotbed for, for this discussion. I think the change must start from, from university. And I, I'm really aware that in Lithuania, uh, I think for, from, from, that, uh, from those years of uh, late 80s, we do not have so much uh, vast movements that are changing our social landscape. So I think uh, in that sense, you have to uh, shape up and you have to to do more and, and express yourself more, and, and I think you'll be heard. You'll be, you, you are heard in the university, so wh wh why won't you be heard in the political circles and, and society in, in mm. general? And are there any organizations that you still miss in Vilnius University, for example, or in other universities that you know would benefit um, students and their lives? Well, I, I would talk about not only really about organizations, but about the need to widen up the field you know of concerns for example in our university strategy we in a new one which was approved quite recently we put a lot of stress on a green course you know we need green course passionate champions in the university who tell us that you must move faster hey administration you must move faster you know do things more efficiently uh, you know think about the the environment you know we want to do that but th this pressure from uh, from the bottom up would help I think you know um, I think in the US as well I mean this has certainly been a year for w where our country has reached a crossroads with regard to civil rights and with human rights and with regard to activism I think all of you are familiar with the Black Lives Matter movement um, which really called attention to a whole set of issues that in the United States we weren't fully addressing um, and it's also um, led, I think, to a number of, of changes, even how, even how uh, a number of the, the existing activist groups operate. And so, for instance, um, LGBT groups are often looking now at um, aspects related to feminism or how race impacts um, the issues that they're looking at more, 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 more broadly. And so I think that there's a, a large confluence of a whole different um, set of issues together, and there's a strong overlap. Um, so I think that that's important. Um, but at the same time, um, 
I think that there probably are movements that we haven't even anticipated yet as the world changes. Mm -hmm. And I think what's most important is that, um, that in the university environment that students, that citizens continue to act from the heart and continue to act in, a, in, in ways to try to, um, to influence public opinion and ultimately um, influence um, policy makers um, that, that leads us to, I think, more equitable and just societies. If I may add one remark, uh, not, not even mentioning LGBT issues, I would say that uh, students uh, in all Lithuanian universities must look around and, and, and see the problems that are really, uh, e even now we are facing and will face in the future even more, uh, from climate change to economical issues to social issues. Uh, I, I think, I think, uh, I, I think students could be more active, uh, even from the, I, I know it, it's called Green Friday Initiative, yeah? Uh, even from those initiatives and so on, I think uh, there are not so much of activism, uh, and 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 I'm really I, re I really would welcome uh, the activity and the and the interest that students would pay in those problems and push us towards solving solving them and maybe in later years help us to solve them. Uh, so so yeah, in that sense, you must look around and see the real problems we're facing because uh, I, I think n we're not talking enough about that and students may help us to, to somehow shape up also. And you are putting um, a lot of, not pressure maybe, but uh, just the emphasis on students, but do you think teachers could also get uh, involved or is it just only for, for the young generation? That's a very good point because we don't, we don't, I think it's wrong to introduce these divisions between students and teachers. We are all community, administrators, uh, lecturers, you know, professors and students. Yeah, we are advisor. all together. Yeah, yeah. Even advisor, yeah, and <laughs> prorector. <laughs> every prorector, every single prorector as well. <laughs> we are a, a single community, you know, uh, or, uh, in which we need to respect each other's views and help each other to achieve our goals, you know. So I, I believe that, uh, you know, it's natural to expect from uh, uh, from academics that they are also, you know, standing in the one line with students, you know, on certain issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, what would you say were the most prominent acts of activism? I don't know, in USA, in Vilnius University, in, in Lithuania in general? The most mm -hmm. prominent acts of activism. There have been so many. <laughs> I know. Um, Maybe your and, one. <laughs> and I mean, American democracy um, from the very beginning. Um, when um, in our Declaration of Independence, the words are embedded, you know, all men, and I'll add women. They should have, there should be an asterisk. <laughs> I'll go back and rewrite that one if I could, but I would. But all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. And among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And in many ways, that's a defining theme for all of the great social movements um, that have happened in the United States, um, be it early on when we expanded the right to vote from a, a small group of elites to um, a sort of a broader population, when, um, when beginning with activists who fought against slavery, um, we fought a, a horrific um, civil war and then proceeded on another century and a half of efforts by activists by civil society, um, by people who stood up um, for what was right to try to um, um, uh, create a more equal society for African Americans and for others in the United States based on race, um, to the women's movement, which here and other places was fundamental in giving you the right to vote, um, but also um, leading to ever greater equality. And then, of course, to the LGBT rights movement. And there have been so many incredible leaders who were so brave and, and who I, whom I admire so tremendously. I think it would be hard for me to, to point to any single moment. Um, but I think that the greatest moments in, our, in, our, in the history of our democracies are actually when, when activists had an impact, be it from the, 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 19, the early 1990s and the late 80s in, in Lithuania. Um, be it the American LGBT rights movement being in a whole range of areas. I mean, the ability of individuals um, to, to totally transform um, society in a more equal way is just absolutely stunning. And for actor from well, Ubilius University, maybe. I was ceaselessly scanning my mind, for <laughs> example. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I think, you know, as we discussed a bit uh, earlier, uh, you know, the, the, the tradition of social activism is a bit smaller here in Lithuania in universities, but they have certain peak periods. I mentioned F F Filomata and Filarete, you know. Uh, of course, this period of the uh, end of the Soviet Union was the time when I remember, you know, we had an exam uh, by Professor Gudavich, who's a great historian, and he said and it was just before uh, January 13th, and he said, just get out of here and go to defend your parliament, and we happily left, you know, with good <laughs> grades. You know. So it was, was a peak time as well, you know. I think there might be a peak going, uh, coming up now, uh, and you are part of that new peak, you know, LGBT plus uh, group at Vilnius University, and you actually stand out very much so, not because of the uh, topic, but because you are not followed by larger groups of people concerned with other issues, you know. So uh, let's hope it's a new peak which is coming, yeah. Uh, you will think that I will try, I'm trying to sugarcoat the answer, but uh, I, I, must, I must agree to the director. I think uh, the, the, the creation of LGBT plus group was also a, a big step forward in the university life in, in broader sense. Uh, and I think the activity that you have and that, 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 that main thing that you're not seeking for, for cheap popularity and you're raising important questions and you're doing things by heart and, and really trying to just intellectually express yourself and put yourself in a society in equal position uh, are, are really the, 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 the great point of our university, uh, not academical but social life. Uh, and I hope that other groups, as I mentioned, uh, concerned about climate change or concerned about, I know that in uh, student society, the economical and social issues are quite quite uh, emphasized thing then and, and, and they're uh, trying to solve the problems. But, uh, but, uh, but I wish those problems would be more discussed in, in, in groups and in, in, in movements. And we will see those movements who are constructive towards university and its, uh, in its management, administration, but also uh, trying to critique what's happening and try to uh, make, uh, trying to, I don't know, uh, put solutions on the table and say, discuss them, let's do something. So we, we are at least open for that and we are looking forward to, to, to seeing more and more activism and uh, constructive critique. Thank you. Uh, and our time is coming to an end. We're in a second, we're going to have some uh, questions from the audience. But I think my last question um, for you would be if, you know, I don't know, all of the activism activists uh, in Lithuania could hear you, uh, what would you say to them? Well, how would you, you know, encourage them not to give up, uh, you know, continue their work that they are doing? What I, what I will say is be brave keep at it. You're having an impact often in ways that you don't see. And again, I'll, I'll go back to LGBT. Um, there, are, there are many um, people who are young people, particularly who are LGBT, who are suffering in silence. And when they see activists actually speaking out, um, they realize that they're not alone. And it, it helps them, I think, on a very, very personal level. Um, but also, um, you know, as, I, as, as I've said over, over my life, I've been surprised at, um, at the real impact um, that movements can have and that individuals can have, especially um, when, when those individuals, when those activists are working from the heart um, and they're working with conviction and they don't give up. You just have to keep pushing on the wall and eventually it falls down. Uh, but sometimes it just seems like it's gonna be a, a lot more work than you expected, but, but, but keep it up. And, um, and you have my ad admiration and, and my very um, heartfelt support. If, with ambassador's permission, can I still advertise American things, you know? Yes. <laughs> okay, so I, 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 I say be persevere, you know, as the thing, American thing in Mars, you know, perseverance, yeah. So what's the name of that helicopter? Which hel helicopter? Which is, is on Mars as well, you know, but with perseverance. Oh, okay. I, we need one of our scientists here. Ingenuity. Ingenuity. Ingenu okay, yes. Ingenuity yes. and perseverance. That's a thing for, don't have for, for, for activism, for yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, and I, I can put it short, uh, uh, m my message for, for the activists, which I also feel the part of, uh, would be reason is on our side and don't be afraid to be reasonable. And I think reason, in the end, reason and I, I would also add personally empathy all, all, always wins. So uh, just let's stay, stay sharp and stay, stay, stay close to the matter. 
So maybe now we have some questions from the audience. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Uh, well, of course, activism has great potential to bring some sort of social change, but then in the case of LGBT uh, issues, in here it's kind of interpreted as changing people's beliefs. So one people interpret it as something that seeks to destroy something that's very valuable to them. To some people it's also an existential danger because their rights are at stake. But then uh, it's kind of very difficult to change people's views and perceptions. Uh, so my question kind of is, uh, what comes first, the legal change or social change? Because it, the issue in Lithuania at the moment is becoming so, so polarized and so contested and it seems that just uh, it's, it's, it's very... Um, uh, your Sens so sensitive, sensitive, yeah. Right. So maybe it's best to target the decision makers and try to uh, persuade them without causing this ruckus, because this ruckus is disturbing the, the situation. Like maybe the decision makers, because of the ruckus, they feel kind of they, that they cannot afford to make this decision, to put this... Uh, uh, measure through because they are, their reputation is at stake, they are constituencies. So. I think you have to work at both levels at mm -hmm. the same time. And, and um, sometimes you achieve progress at the leadership level and other times um, really at the grassroots level. But ultimately the leadership is going to be influenced more broadly by, by public opinion. And so I think you have to work, um, work in both directions. I'll say in the U.S., I mean, it, this, was, this has been hard in the U.S. as well. And there, there were times, I, I think of, I think it was the, the U.S. elections in 2006, when a lot of politicians used referenda at a state level to, um, to prohibit same-sex marriage as a way to bring out conservative voters. And it was, um, it was really, really a difficult time. And things were very polarized on this particular issue, and it seemed to be a very dark time. But... Um, we just kept moving forward in lots of different ways. And it was through traditional activists. It was for people being out and proud from public figures coming out as LGBT, um, such that increasingly, um, you know, the grandma in the countryside um, wasn't worried anymore about some gay person far away, but rather was, mm -hmm. um, was happy to see her gay grandson with his boyfriend come over. And it, it's, it took a long time in the US, um, really a long time. And the, the numbers in the United States against same-sex partnership, probably 15 years ago, were very close to what you see here. But now 70% of Americans support marriage, not just partnership, um, with another percentage supporting um, partnership. And, um, and it took a long time to get there, um, but you just have to don't lose, don't lose faith and, and keep at it. And I think on, on this one, really logic is on your side as well. Uh, I must agree with Ambassador uh, what he said. Uh, I, ha I had a discussion actually about a month ago with uh, Lefirna Human Rights Center uh, activist with Jurati Uskaita and we, we had a, a friendly discussion about what we should do. And I and also uh, keep, keep my position saying that uh, uh, we must look to the parallel of, of those changes. We, mu we, must, we must ensure that social and political changes go together and they progress at the same time. If we see that something is not progressing, we must somehow push it and, 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 and talk openly about it. But uh, yeah, I, I, I think this process m must, must, uh, must uh, move in a parallel way uh, just because um, the political decision would not somehow solve those uh, social or psychological issues that those people have towards the uh, towards the uh, other communities or minorities, uh, and 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 also the social issues might uh, might somehow s some somehow push the political progress from the from the stall point that we are having now. And seeing that there are a lot of people, there are a lot of people who goes to election even who who vote for for the parliament members, for example, in Lithuania we have openly uh, gay parliament, parliament members who are, who are uh, trying to represent the community and people see that and I think despite all the, all the tension, all the 
saying that there are a lot of people who are angry about uh, that something is rep represented. I think uh, a lot of people who are silent are re really learning that there's nothing wrong happening, that we are seeing the progress and we are seeing people, uh, people uh, who, 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 who react to equally as, as we should. So, so yeah, in that sense, I, I, I believe in parallelity of those, uh, or, or at least that correlation between uh, the social change and political change. Yeah. Yeah, I, I basically agree with uh, Ambassador and Paulus very much. So just maybe one more aspect uh, which is important to me is that uh, it's a very difficult work, but it needs to be done. You need, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> you need to open, uh, you need to create spaces for people to experience diversity, you know? If they, if they, if they don't get this experience, they, they don't understand what we are talking about. They live in their own minds, you know? They don't absorb reality, you know? Because the reality is, uh, is so con you know, uniform around them. You need to open up people for diversity, you know? It's very simple, you know, like, I in our department we had a person who came up, uh, a gay person, you know, and nothing fell down, you know, and nothing died, nobody died, you know, and, and he remained the same fine person. So why you the know? reconstruction, Director? <laughs> 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 if nothing fell down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly <laughs> the point, you know. And, uh, yeah. and so, uh, I mean... I, I, I'm mad that uh, it's also important for, for the... Uh, uh, for the mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters of the LGBT person and co-workers to, to, to talk about it, talk about the normality of the situation and that nothing wrong is happening. Because I, I personally uh, know the, the mother uh, and I personally know uh, Dominika Svitakunas, a uh, famous singer and actor in Lithuania, whose mother are also an activist and he, sh she's really passionate about the thing and she's really passionate about defending her son and his rights and I see that uh, in my town, there are people uh, who, who somehow uh, reflect that wha what she's saying, and there are uh, other mothers who are uh, saying, "Yes, we, we, we do we do understand what, what you're experiencing, and we do understand that your position is not is not as privileged as ours." So yeah. yeah. And one more I important thing is that you know we don't need always to say that uh, some people who lack experience of diversity they are homophobic. You know, they just don't. They never encountered, you know, such situation. I, yeah. I remember I did an experiment with one of, one of my relatives, you know, uh, she would say that I would never take an apple from a gay person, you know, it's a saying, you know. And we had experiment, we had, you know, friends coming from abroad, they're a gay couple, and we were together like a week, you know, traveling, and then uh, I didn't tell that, you know. And after they left, I said, they, they are gay persons. <laughs> Oh really, so nice people. <laughs> you couldn't tell. <laughs> <laughs> As if you can tell, yeah. But yeah, yeah. I, th I get what you what you mean. You know, bringing just closer yeah, yeah. and yeah, personal yeah. experiences, as you mentioned. You yeah. know, keeping open door for yeah. openness. Yeah, yeah. Despite how trivial it might sound. Yeah. Exactly. I know Polis will have to leave us uh, shortly. <laughs> yeah, in police department, <laughs> we <we're> wait <laughs> for the. Yeah. Yeah, but I think we have uh, um, a minute for a short question, so maybe. Good afternoon to the speakers and the moderator. Um, my question is mainly for Vilnius University Director's uh, team members. Um, first, for some context, I would like to mention that University's LGBT plus organization has had Vilnius University's chaplain as a guest on the radio show. And he said that he wouldn't attend a pride, a pride parade without a purpose of preaching something or something along uh, the lines of that. Um, mainly because he feels as if it would be a kind of tokenism from our side. So my question is, would you advise Venus University's rector to attend Pride to show solidarity towards the LGBT plus community? And what is your stance on attending Pride and the view of tokenism in it? As an advisor, yes, definitely. And, <laughs> and, and, and of course, uh, I, I, I said my stance is I, I always participate and I will participate in CONUS if we will have the possibility at least uh, 15 people or, or, or 3,000 people who somehow could uh, <laughs> pretend to be 15 people uh, walking walking in a crowd. So, so yeah, uh, yes, definitely. Uh, I, I do not see the problem of, of this. Uh, of this uh, Fully uh, concur with Polos, yeah. Okay, so pretty I think... Pretty much all the problems. Yeah, pretty much. 
<laughs> and with that, uh, yeah, so, so it's been a huge honor. I can't thank you enough for your time. It's really been, I think, at least for me, it was really interesting to, to, to listen to your um, experiences, listen to your, what you have to say about it. I'm sure everyone can say the same. So, so thank you so much and uh, hopefully we'll see each other soon. Thank you for Thanks so much. Thank you. This was a delight. Thanks. <laughs> thank, thank you. you.